What's up, DigiDestins? This is Kyle D, better known as Rhyme Avatar, and today we're going to be going over more tops in the JP meta. So let's get into the video and talk about it. But we'll worry about the math later. So Apocalypmon has 35 wins. We have Blue Purple Garumon, which I think is still a mixture of Bialzamon as Bellastarmon and stuff like that. So Blue is taking off, but we'll see how that continues. Then we have Anubismon at 15, SOC at 13, Oryumon Digipolist at 8, Red Black Greymon 7, Shine Greymon 7, Bloom Lord 7, Yellow Vaccine 6, Fanglong 5, Mirage Gauk 5. So if we just take a look at the chart, you can definitely see the gap here. It's only like a 10 for the top two now, which is kind of better than where it was, but we're definitely seeing people are starting to develop for the format, kind of get an understanding. So we'll see if that continues. But Apocalyptmon is 35, Garumon's at 24, Anubis is at 15, SOC is 13, 8 for the Oriumon Digipolice deck, which is kind of a start. We talked about this a week and a half ago, that how this deck is running and operating. It's kind of cool to see that they mixed it, and the deck's actually quite functional, and it's really cool to see a green-black deck kind of go off. You have Red-Black Greymon, Shine Greymon, Bloom Lord, Yellow Vaccine Fanglong, Mirage, Gammamon, Machine Dramon, and then kind of just got everybody else that are coming in in the from the void. So it's kind of pretty cool to see that decks are coming in. And then Bella Starmon or Bialza Starmon is basically on the chart now. So I don't know if they separated it yet, but I think there's still a lot more in the blue purple Gurumon people are just putting it in. So let's take a look at the first deck. I want to talk about Alter S. This one was part of a 3v3. And it's kind of cool to see the list. I wanted to check out because it does have the new Omekimon, and it's top three times so far. Not a bad thing to happen, but, you know, you know how the deck wants to function. It's basically a chain evolution. You know, you have the Agumon and the Gabumon, basically free evolution in the Gurumon and Greymon line into the Metal Greymon to Wear Gurumon line. And then you have Crest Gurumon, Blitz um, Greymon, and then you Joggers into Omnimon Alter S, and you call it a day. Well, Omekimon definitely added something to the deck that most people weren't expecting. So, while this card is revealed from the top of the deck, it's also treated as an Omnimon. It's a blocker on play. If it's your turn, one of your other Digimon may Digivolve into a Digimon with Greymon or Gurumon its name from your hand without Digi-Evolution costs. Reduce the cost by two. So, basically, this five costs can set you up, and it can Digi-Cross with a Agumon or Greymon or a Gabumon or Gurumon. So it kind of just digi-crosses to set himself up, but when attacking, you digivolve one of your opponent's Digimon. So it's a pretty decent inheritable as well, just to bring one of the boss Digimons down. But it has some potential. Let's see if it continues. Using the defensive trainings definitely probably helps this deck out because it is a pure black deck. It has very little whiff targets except for Omnimon Alter S itself. If you notice, they're not even playing the tie and mat anymore. And I think that's just because defensive training can just get you the pieces you need. And then you set up and you kind of just climb chain and then you can keep it your turn with this climb, train, climb chaining kind of finesse you're doing. So pretty good to see where that goes. Um, I don't think you can activate it in the middle of that climb evolution chain thing going on. So you would only be able to activate this at the beginning. So that's just kind of where that's going. Then we do have Leomon. I want to talk about Leomon because Leomon's definitely went from being a blue deck to a pure green deck. And there's some spicy stuff going on here. So definitely seeing some tops with that deck as well. So we have Heavy Leomon being able to dominate when the Sigimon is deleted. While it has a Digivolution, you may play it for its cost. So we have the, if you guys don't remember, this was basically an effect that only, who had it? Millenniumon did. So Millenniumon had the ability, and then boom, now it's a keyword. So hopefully they reprint Millenniumon with this keyword, because that's basically what it does. So when Digivolving on deletion, D Digivolve 1-1, one, one, one of your opponent's Digimon, then return one of your opponent's Digimon with 6,000 DP or less to the bottom of the deck. And then end of attack, once per turn, return one of your opponent's 4,000 DP or less to the bottom of the deck. If, if this effect didn't return, unspend the Digimon. So if you can bring it back to your turn, you can swing in again. Heavy Leomon's actually kind of really good. Then you have Boncho Leomon doing his thing. You know, when you would play this card from your hand, if there are six or fewer cards in both player security, reduce the cost by five, becoming a seven cost by himself. On play, when Digivolving suspend one of your opponent's Digimon, all turns, once per turn, when a Digimon becomes suspended, you may give one of your opponent's Digimon 4,000 
minus 4,000 BP, and it gains security minus 1 until the end of opponent's turn. So kind of making threats a little bit weaker. The Omnimon Merciful mode is just for the Apocalyptic Mon matchup, just to be able to spin back pieces that are in the trash. So just keep that in mind, that's what they're trying to do here. Um, definitely interesting to see Attack of the Heavy Mobile Machine, but I'm guessing it's just to be able to slam down your heavy low heavy Leomon just to be able to attack the same turn. It's just really nasty. Then you have final Zubagon Punch for a security attack plus one reboot and blocker. Then super eradication attack, which is kind of cool. You just blow up your heavy Leomon because he'll come back. You know, it's a fine trade. Your opponent loses out on value here. But you have like green memory boost, agility trainings. You kind of get the gist of what this deck is trying to do. It's doing what every other green deck is trying to do, but most of the focus is on the top end. So it's kind of really cool. It has some control elements, and I like this deck. I can't wait to see how much more it evolves by the end of the format. Then we have Angoramon. Um, Angoramon hasn't really done much, even in previous formats, but I figure because we finally get to see this deck shine a little bit, let's take a look at what they're trying to do with it. So you know how Ruli is. Ruli is just trying to, you may unspend one of your Digimon, you know, when your Digi-Evolution cards into a green beast animal, you know, you're going to be playing the Angora Mine. You're always a beast. So in, in one of its traits, by spending the Stamer, reduce the Digi-Evolution cost by one. Same thing here. We have a Mem Setter, and then this one just gets to when you're attacked with a Digimon with Angora in its name or is a level 5 or higher by suspending the same or suspend one of your opponent's 5,000 DP or less. So, really Mem Setter, you know, Green Mem Boost. This probably should have just been the trainings, to be honest with you. If you're going to play this deck, I think just go straight trainings. Um, Air, Air Dramon, so when a card with Angora in its text would be played or when a Digimon would digivolve into a Digimon with Angora in its text by suspending this Digimon, reduce the cost by 2. So, Air Dramon sped up the deck where it needed to. And then when this Digimon becomes suspended, one of your Digimon with Angoramon in his text gains Rush for the turn. So that helps out because you can just play. This is where I think Green Membus would have been. I mean, trainings would be better because then, you know, you could set up properly here and just be like, okay, I'm going to reduce the cost on my ultimate instead. You know, it's it's got a lot of potential here. I mean, Airdramon does do what the trainings do, but... It's just a lot of stuff going on. And Goromon just going into Durabimon, even Ace here. So on play, when did you suspend one of your opponent's Digimon? And then if your opponent has no unsuspended Digimon, gain two memory. When attacking, you may play one Digimon with Angora and Sex from your hand without paying its cost. Return the Digimon played by this effect to your hand at the end of your opponent's turn. Okay, Overflow 4, kind of just going for it. I think this deck has a lot of potential. We'll see if this continues to do something. But I think it's just a little too slow, and it's still showing that it's the weakest out of the bunch. Then we have Insectoids. We haven't seen Insects, so it's kind of cool to finally see this hit the stage. So Iz Izzy's deck hasn't really done anything from, from anything. So from the beginning of time, let's be honest. So Tentomon, start a main phase by spending one Digimon, one of your Digimon with Insectoids, gain plus 3,000 DP until the end of opponent's turn, so make you big body. Then all turns, when this Digimon deletes an opponent's Digimon in battle, gain one memory. So just really solid there. Then you have Kabuterimon, when this Digimon, same thing inheritable with the Tentomon line, but while this Digimon is suspended, it is unaffected by effects of your opponent's Digimon, so you can't just remove them or minus their DP. Then you have Mega Kabu Karimon Ace on play when Digivolving one of your Digimon gets plus 3000 DP until the end of opponent's turn. Then, if your opponent's Digimon is attacking, you may switch the attack target to this Digimon. All turns while this Digimon is suspended, it is unaffected by your opponent's Digimon effects. So, option removal or swinging into it is kind of how you get rid of it. I kind of like that. It just it sets up Kabu Karimon. It makes them really harder to remove, and that's kind of what you want. Then you have Hercules Kabu Karimon. Start a main phase, when did you all one of your opponent's Digimon, one of your Digimon gains piercing for the turn. All turns when this Digimon is suspended, it isn't affected by an effect of your opponent's Digimon. So, kind of makes him big and beefy and really annoying to deal with, but Hercules caught with Terry Mon's really solid. And you have what's spicy here is Chaostromon being able to unsuspend, then it can attack one of your opponent's Digimon. Because he gets buffed by all of these effects, and because these aren't restrictive, you can easily gain that memory off of Chaostromon 
now and get that piercing and then make your opponent have a bad day. Then you have like Super Shock Shocker, spend one level six or lower Digimon. One of your insect toys gets plus 3000 DP until the end of opponent's turn. So this is how you're going to get all this power buff. And then you basically take on any Digimon threat very easily. And you have like the trainings and stuff like that. Izzy as well, it's a mem setter, but when an opponent's Digimon attacks by suspending this tamer, switch the attack target to one of your suspended Digimon with insect toys in a straight. So because you're going to go big beefy here, most of the time you should be high enough in the DP threshold because this should be giving it since the start of turn. So 3,000 3, DP plus 3,000 DP brings you up to 18 if you kind of just chain this off, if you can do all that without passing turn. So has a lot of potential. I think it's really nasty of a deck. We'll see what happens going forwards. Now let's talk about Royal Knights. Royal Knights is quite interesting, especially if he's went 4-0 against Black War Greymon, Beelzemon, Shine Greymon, and Anubis. Kind of good to see that. So it might seem like there's a possibility. Uh, he's going to be taking one BT-13 Karenimon out to put another Karenimon from BT-3, and then one EX-3 minusing the BT-13. Or this has already been changes he's already made to the deck. So let's take a look at it. Royal Knights, if you don't remember, kind of just filter in with King Drazel. They reduce costs constantly and then just go Wambo Combo. The only card I don't know was this, but I think it's just a Sister Mont Blanc just so that you can use it with Gankumon. It wasn't, it was a level three, the number, but I could not figure out who it is. Interesting enough, it plays Salomon. I wasn't expecting this, but being able to win a Digimon with Royal Knights and traits among them to your hand, you know, I'm guessing that's what it's in there for to grab your Royal Knights. I think it's a cute tech. Would I probably play it? Probably not, but it's it's in the deck. It's going to do what it wants to do. You know, you have the Gallant Mons for Rush and Omnis, you know, Royal Knights of the Purge, and then Crimson Blaze to slow down your opponent. There's a lot of potential with this deck, and I can't, I'm here to say I'm excited for it. Oh, you know, maybe this might show some resurgence. We might see some different plays and stuff like that. I think we have a lot of potential, and I'm really excited to see what the end result's going to look like at the end of the day. We need to see if it continues to be really solid or a bad choice, but we'll need to know. I'm excited to say that we have a Royal Knights playing back into it. You know, all those Royal Knights fans really do enjoy their deck. So without further ado, you guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll catch you next one. Peace!